I'm redoing the f video I did on functions or the set theoretic definition of a function because I know how to make the video quality better now and my handwriting was pretty poor in the first one. So let's work through this. So we're going to start with what's called set builder notation. So set builder notation is a way of specifying a set. So we write curly brackets to denote a set. So curly bracket x element a such that p of x. So this is the set builder notation. So here p of x is essentially some predicate. So it's a condition that x must satisfy in order to be an element of this set. A is generally speaking implicit. So you a lot of the time you won't actually see the element A written. You'll just see something like x such that p of x. This is fine when A is implied, but you have to know that the A actually exists. Otherwise you run into what's called Russell's paradox. Russell's paradox. Russell's paradox. This is Bertrand Russell. Bertrand Russell was like a mathematical logician and he did a lot of work on set theory and type theory. So you should look up his work Principia Mathematica if you want to get a feel for what he was about. But yeah, that's a really 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 tough book. Okay. I won't I'm going to do a whole video on Russell's paradox, go through what that is, but for now let's just assume that A is given. For this course, A is generally speaking going to be the set of real numbers or some subset of the real numbers or r squared which is the cartesian product with cartesian product of r with itself the real numbers with themselves so that brings up our next definition which is the cartesian product so Cartesian product we can denote by set builder notation again. So A cross B, the Cartesian product of A and B is the set of all little a, the set of all ordered pairs of little a, little b, such that A, little a is an element of big A and little b is an element of big B. So this is the condition that this ordered pair must satisfy in order to be an element of the Cartesian product. Now from here on out I'm going to use the wedge notation for and, so this is conjunction. Essentially what this means is that the two statements have to both be true in order for the whole statement to be true and it's false otherwise. So you should look up conjunction if you want to know specifically and find a truth table for conjunction. A, little a element A and little b element B. So now that we've defined the Cartesian product, let's think of the Cartesian product of the real numbers with themselves. So we have A, sorry, R cross R, which we write R squared 
So it's the set of all ordered pairs of real numbers. So an example would be 1 and 1. And there are just a few more. <laughs> So this brings up an interesting question. Sets are defined without an order. So you can give them an order, but an ordered pair can be defined purely in terms of unordered sets. So the standard definition of the ordered pair A and B is the set that contains the set that contains A and the set that contains A and B. This is in the notes. So I'd look that up. Okay. So now a relation, a binary relation, on the Cartesian product of two sets is some subset denoted R of the Cartesian product of A and B where A and B could be any set any two sets so subset is defined so let's pick two new sets X subset y if and only if so if and only if is a biconditional connective so it says that this implies this so the left hand side implies the right hand side and the right hand side implies the left hand side okay so this means for all x within some implicit set, x element big X implies x element y. So essentially what it's saying is that if x is a subset of y, every element of x is an element of y. So note that the empty set is a subset of every set <laughs> and every set is a subset of itself. Those properties can come in useful, can be useful. So now we know what a subset is. Okay. So we also know what a relation is. So a relation is a subset of a Cartesian product of two sets. Binary relation. R subset A cross B. Now if R is a subset of A cross B and the following two conditions hold, condition one. So if for all, there's a video that I've done on uh, universal and existential quantifiers, you might want to look into that or just Google it. For all x element a, there exists some y element b such that the ordered pair x, y is an element of R. Okay. The second property is that essentially, so this, so let's go back to the first property. The first property states that for every element of A, there is a corresponding element in B. Now the second property states that that corresponding element in B is unique. So the way we state that is we say for all x element 
A. X comma Y one element R and X comma Y two element R implies that Y one equals Y two. So the element is unique. The element in the codomain is unique to a particular element in the domain. So these properties completely characterize a function. So we have a new notation for functions. We write f it's bad. We write f is a mapping from a to B. So this means that F is a function. So F satisfies these properties. And that's the set theoretic definition of a function. So just as a teaser, <laughs> so a sequence or like specifically an infinite sequence is a function from the natural numbers to the real numbers. So this is a pretty important concept in the course. So getting your head around the set theoretic definition of a function can be quite useful. Okay. Thanks.